Hey guys, it's Will from Tested. I'm here at CES 2015 with Greg Marks, who works on a new kind of 3D printer that I've never yep. seen before. Um, you guys are building printers that can put other filament inside the, the printed material that you're laying down. Yes. So what we do is we have the uh, world's first 3D printer for carbon fiber. Mm -hmm. And what it does is it prints yeah. nylon parts and then reinforces them with continuous strand carbon fiber. So and the benefit for this is rigidity, I assume? It's strength to rigidity. So if you have your normal 3D printed plastic part, mm -hmm. this came off our nylon head, you know, it's flexible, like mm -hmm. you would imagine. Also, plastic has a tendency to warp, mm -hmm. right? So it tends to be like, you know, not exactly true to form. The nylon's uh, almost like monofilament fishing wire, the same kind of material? Exactly, Okay. exactly. And this is, uh, now this one, our printer uniquely has this second head. So it automatically alternates between these two heads. So it'll print nylon, then it will have this composite filament head, which we invented, that lays down this continuous strand of carbon fiber. Yeah. It looks like you're laying down like a strand of black fishing line. Like okay. you're kind of pasting it down into and following the trajectory that you're going down. And is it hitting while the plastic's still soft enough to embed in each layer? Okay, so or here's an example of a, of a wrench, which we stopped mid-print. And what you can see here is it almost looks like a wood grain, mm -hmm. but that is fiberglass. So in each layer, this is one complete strand of fiberglass wrapped around many, many times. Oh, okay. So, and then at the end of the layer, it chops it, it off. Chops it, goes to the next layer, and repeats. So what you're going to get is stuff that still has the same structural strength problems as normal 3D printed stuff when you separate layers. Okay, so in the in the Z axis, it's as strong as plastic. Okay. In the, in the bending axis, it's as strong as aluminum. Wow. In the tension axis, it's as strong as steel. Wow. Okay. So, so tensile, and you're getting all sorts of different load so, strengths yeah, so based on how the fiber is laid down. Exactly. So the best way, actually, my fiance came up with this. The best way to uh, think of it is like wood grain, right? So this has this. It looks actually the fiberglass looks mm -hmm. like wood grain. It acts like wood grain. The strength is in the direction of the grain, right? So in this handle, this is a wrench. When you spin this, mm -hmm. you're putting all this bending load on the handle. The fibers are exactly in the right orientation to resist oh, that bending load. That's that's amazing, actually. It's really really fascinating. Actually, and she came up with this great analogy. So uh, you know, pla so you have like wood, and you have like chopped particle board, mm -hmm. and then you have like the glue that holds it together. So like nylon is the glue that holds it together. Mm -hmm. If you do like chopped composite, that's like particle board. Mm -hmm. And if you do continuous strand composite, that's like wood from a tree. Wood from a tree. Uh, yeah, uh, she came up with this, it's brilliant. Super strong in some super directions, strong. but not in the others. Exactly. Um, so, okay, so you can apply carbon fiber. Let's let's demonstrate, because I think this was a cool demo. Yeah. Like if, if you take the blank nylon, yeah. and I'll, I'll bend so yeah. everybody knows it's yeah, not cooked. Yeah. But I mean, it's, it's really flexible, right? And then I take the same thing Relative, same thickness even, I'm maybe exact, a little thinner. It's the exact same, so one of the magics of the software is you import this file, mm -hmm. right? So we have one we have one print head, this does fit and form. Okay. So you test it out. Then you add the carbon to the exact same part, mm -hmm. you click a button, says add fiber, it automatically lays the fiber in the automatically. Oh, so you don't have to that. lay the fiber in your, you in your CAD file. No, dude, why would we make you do that? Oh, <laughs> that's amazing. So, uh, and how does it know, do you tell it which, strength, which directions you want to be strong? Okay, so you do that by telling it, so when you bring the part into the print bed, mm -hmm. You, the way that you orient it, it will put the fibers flat. Okay. So you so uh, like with this. So all these pieces were printed flat. Okay. Same with this quad copy. Well, uh, so you have to pick the orientation like normal FDM. But and then it knows which direction to put the fiber in, just because yeah. it assumes that it, the okay. longest axis is going to be the strongest. And it's really cool. What it does is uh, we have this patent pending algorithm that takes the. Uh, I'm gonna get all nerdy on you. Go get nerdy. You slice. If you, if you imagine slicing this, and you have a cross section of mm -hmm. this part. We automatically put the fibers up and out to maximize what's called the, mo the moment of inertia. So you get uh, it, it turns it into a sandwich panel, and it looks like a sandwich, right? Mm -hmm. So the, in this situation, the composite fiber is the bread, and all this filler is like the meat. Okay. Right now, unlike a sandwich, the meat is like the fluffy part, and the bread is like the strong part. So by putting the fibers up and out. You get high strength, lightweight, and the reason is uh, the, the bending strength of your part is material properties to the exponential power from the center line. And, and these, just to be clear, these aren't 100% infill parts. I can see no, the grid so inside. No, we sanded this away so you could see uh, this is the internal structure, which makes it much, much, much lighter. So makes I, it lighter and prints faster. Print I, time is material deposited. Right, right. It's the same as any FDM printer. Exactly. The more stuff you put in, the longer it's going to take. You got it. You got I, it. I have to imagine. So, so basically, what you're doing is 3D printing stuff that it can be structurally sound in predictable ways. You got it. Exactly. So, what what are the applications? What are people using? I mean, obviously, oh, you can print wrenches across the board. So, this quadcopter shows off a few new cool features. This has embedded captive nuts. So, these screws from this. So, this is it's printed in two parts, right? So, so this and this section. Uh, it's got it's got that same 
sandwich panel. Mm -hmm. uh, in this one, because I'm a nerd, I went in there and wanted to say exactly which layer I want the fiber on. You can go in there and control exactly which layer has the fiber. And path as well? Uh, yes, you can select the angle and the path. Okay, and, right. and so when you say layer, like if I'm looking at this piece, there's carbon fiber on the top, carbon fiber at the bottom. Is there any in the middle, or is it more okay, or so, less? So the middle is empty in this one? Okay. Because that's the default. So most of the things we show, this is default, that's default, this is default. Most of the things we show are default. This is like, I went in and designed the fiber layer for, because it's a block Because, yeah, of course. Right. Uh, um, and then you can also use different different materials to lay in to get different properties. I know. Yes, okay. So we have, uh, so this is, well, this is carbon. Carbon has the highest strength to weight. Mm -hmm. This part, by the way, is $19. Wow. Right? That's 19. The carbon fiber is not very radio uh, um, friendly though, right? No, that's why we have fiberglass. So okay. if you want to, so and that's why this is fiberglass. If you want to embed all your electronics inside something and you want the RF to come out, fiberglass. Okay. If you want the RF to stay in, carbon. Carbon. Makes right? sense. Also really cool in medical applications. If you want to go into an MRI, you want the you want to be able to read through something, you make out a fiberglass. fiberglass. Okay. So it gives you, you know, this these fiberglass parts give you something that have strength like metal, but they're transparent to MRIs. Very which cool. Is, which is very cool. Very cool. This is one of the first printers I've seen in this price range that uses nylon. And when I've used nylon on like a traditional MakerBot or, or you know ABS PLA printers, it's kind of been potentially problematic. People have told me horror stories about clogging their nozzles and all yeah. sorts of stuff like that. Um, so why nylon? So we use nylon because it's a it's a great material to blend with the composites. Okay. Right. It's it's easy enough to print. Uh, the the hard thing for us was the composites. Nylon was not uh, was not free, but it was a lot easier than the composite side. And nylon inherently blends really well with composites. So we've now the nylon we use uh, on the composite side is a custom blend that you know, Tony mixed up with all these different plastics. Material too. science stuff. Yeah, it is, well, Tony's uh, Tony was the chief scientist for A123. So he's uh, he's a polymer guy for many many years. Um, do you have a heated build platform, or are you printing? We don't. We don't. So how are you handling? Garolite and glue. Okay. Right, this was this was invented in the open source community, uh, and we love them for it. Right. It works really well. Um, do you have problems with warping? I guess the fart fiber prevents okay. the warping, okay. right? Yeah. Plastic. So well, we have a big one. Uh, if you have the if the bed is leveled correctly, which we have a precision uh, kinematic coupling, mm -hmm. so it stays level when you bring it in and put it back. 10 micron repeatability, okay. that stays level. Uh, if the bed is level, you put glue down, and you do a, a low, you know, a, a, you use the standard default settings, warping is not a big problem. If you if you add fiber, warping just goes away. Wow. Right, that's, and that's, so this, I mean, look at how flat it is. It's like. Yeah, it, it, there's no rocker. Yeah, no, it doesn't. So like, you know, a normal, now this, this printed flat, but over time. Bent. It's gonna warp, right? As the, yeah, because this thing, it's just flat. Right, and the reason is the, uh, so here's how to think about it. Uh, the nylon expands and contracts. It expands and contracts with humidity, expands and contracts with temperature. Carbon fiber does not. And when those two fight, carbon wins 10 out of 10 times, <laughs> right? So, okay, um, other, other applications, what else are people using oh, for bike parts, car parts, stuff like that? You name it, so for automotive, so our, uh, this blend of nylon has a heat deflection temperature of 126 Celsius which is right in the sweet spot where automotive, they can't mount it to the engine, but they can put it everywhere else. Okay, so right? shock mounts and all you that can, kind of stuff? Everywhere, anywhere where you need a bracket in automotive, now you, that you can embed composite in it, you can 3D print it. That's bananas. So you're like, door brackets, hinges, and you're, you're everything, so mechanical engineers, all day we make brackets. The seat is like a bracket for you. Yeah. Right, like everything in the car is a bracket and they love this, right? If you're a, if you're a consumer product company, We've had a number of them come by. This, okay, this, this, every, everything here except for this, uh, this is as it came out of the machine. This is not sanding. Wow. Right? So we have a really precision uh, XY system, uh, and the software is really good. So the stuff comes out, I mean, that's, we, we wash the glue off the bottom, but right. this, is, uh, this is not sanded. That's, that's gorgeous. That's how it is. Um, what's the vertical resolution? 100 micron. And how are you your one to one, I assume, on, on printed parts, CAD to the final yeah. product? Yeah. So th here's the thing, though. You can like tell it to go smaller. It just takes longer. Right. So we can do 50 microns, but then it takes. This is already like an eight hour print, right? If I make out of 50 microns and I give you both, you can't tell the difference. Yeah. The only time you can ever actually see the difference is like in this, in this uh, thing where you have, so if your curve is anywhere like up to 30 degrees, you can't see it. If it's almost flat, you can see mm -hmm. the scallops. Okay. So only a situation like this would you ever want like 
Which is smaller yeah, precision. Which is exactly. But then it takes your build time and it goes through the roof. So you mentioned print in place, uh, uh, printing nuts in place and locking them into the print. Yes. You can pause layer between layers and say, hey, this yeah. is where you insert nuts or other hardware. So when you so in the software, you can uh, you can go to the layer you want to pause, click a pause. When it finishes that layer, or before it finishes that layer, it shoots you an email and says, hey, come take care of me. That's you come awesome. to the printer, the head's parked to the side, it's in pause, it says on the screen pause. If you monitor it over online, it says pause, it tells you what layer it's on the entire time. You go in there, this guy has all these all these screws mm -hmm. go bolt through the frame and you can kind of see the shadows yeah, of yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's a nut in each of these locations. And so this thing paused, I pulled the platform out, put all the nuts in, put it back in, hit resume, try to find the point where I pulled the platform out. Ten, I, ten micron repeatability, yeah, you're never no, going to find I'm it. not going to see it. It's yeah, not, it's like... That's amazing. Dude, yeah. Um, What's the software situation? What software are you using to, to control the printer okay, and do the, the software, slicing? So we, uh, we debuted for CES, uh, our new cloud software. Mm -hmm. uh, we wrote it in-house. We're the only people in the world who do the fiber thing, which had like, okay, uh, when it lays fiber in this wrench, mm -hmm. uh, that is not an easy problem. So we have some really clever software people who have figured out like how to do all this pathing, they, and they built an entire, well, there's like a... Uh, Actually, it's about to start the uh, start the video. So this this goes through a little bit of a uh, a highlight reel of okay. um, what the software does. So here's the uh, interesting algorithm. So it, it's in the cloud. This thing will run on. So this is real time. That's like that GE turbine spinning around. Okay. And it will do this on any platform. Oh, anything, so you, so it's just a Chrome app or a web anything app. Anything that runs in Google Chrome okay. will run our slicer, right? Very and cool. And it can run like, dude, I have a two and a half year old MacBook Air. It runs just fine. Right, and then all these, all your STLs are stored in the cloud. Mm -hmm. If you have a work group, you can uh, you can collaborate. As in, you can upload something, I can print it. Are you based on an open source slicer, or did you no, write to write the whole thing? Okay, it was so. Uh, yeah, which right. <laughs> I didn't thank God. Makes sense. <laughs> that, yeah. that makes sense. Um, well, they wanted it, it. It's really really fast. So our if you package up our entire uh, our entire system, uh, it's like six megs. Right. If you wow. look at like uh, other things that you download, they're like ginormous, it's big, 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 lots big, of big, big piles. stuff. Right. Um, so I guess the last question is on the on the filament head, the one that's putting the fiber, the fiberglass, yeah. or whatever. In, is it actually reheating the plastic that was laid down on the previous layer? It, it fuses them together. And fuses them together. Yeah, that's amazing. Together. Um, yeah. So this is available now. People can buy it today. If you, if you came here at the beginning of the show, so mm -hmm. I don't know where we're at now. If okay. you came at the beginning of the show and you bought it today, you'd get it in twelve weeks. Okay. And it's how much does it cost? Uh, five and a half thousand. And how much uh, for the materials for the nylon? Okay, and the fiber? so this is this is a nineteen dollar part. Okay. Right. So the so the carbon it's like a dollar. Oh man, don't quote. It's like a dollar thirty five per cubic centimeter. Okay. What I do know is this is nineteen dollars. The fiberglass one's fourteen dollars, and this is nine dollars. Okay, and the and the if you'd send it off to be machined, it would be thirty or forty bucks probably. Oh, if you want to buy one of these CNC mm -hmm. machined out of aluminum, you're looking at like an eighty dollar part. Oh wow. Right. Okay. You're looking at an eighty dollar part, which you may get in like four days. <laughs> right. And if you want it tomorrow, like you're out of luck. So that's that's where that's where we see this going. Mm -hmm. Right. People who uh, I have to imagine like rally car driving people who are driving cars and break stuff and don't want to carry an entire entire you know spare car worth of parts. So everybody well, about this. Okay, all the logistics people, right? If you're military, if you're NASA, if you're if you live off grid, anybody <laughs> off grid, uh, being able to bring reels of material and make whatever part you need is much better than bringing five of everything. Right. So, right. so the end goal is one of these on the space station? That would be the, that would be the definite end goal. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, I, we, we actually, we printed this uh, as a tech demonstrator for NASA because it's like super high strength and very light. Well, I know, I mean, I know they're experimenting with 3D printing now. Yeah. So. Oh, it's super useful for them. They're, there's no further off-grid than the space station. No, it doesn't get any further away than that. <laughs> no. Thank you so much, Greg. That was awesome. It was a pleasure. And we'll have more from CES on Tested real soon. See you guys later. Bye.